Say what's up, people. It's Robert Bassano. Welcome to Planate Veritas. Welcome to Planate Veritas. Doesn't look like you're on air yet. I'm sorry. My bad. It doesn't look like I'm on air? Okay. It's just starting. Remember what I said, people. It's not what you know. It's what you can prove. I thought about doing a recording today. And I said, no, no, no. I can't do my people like that. Can't do them like that. Can't do myself like that. I did conduct one telephone call, people, to NASA. And I spoke to, I, I'm not going to say the name of the person I spoke to, but it was someone in charge of media for the International Space Station. Okay? Um, the person I tried to call, they weren't at their desk. So I had to be put in touch with someone who could answer some questions for me regarding the ISS. And the girl who actually answered the phone says, yeah, I can help you. What can I do for you? So I, I asked her one simple question. Are there any temperature sensors on the outside of the ISS? Is there any data that's being recorded in real time or transmitted back down to the ground that I can refer to to see what the temperatures have been? She goes, well, I don't know that data. And I said, well, don't they have any kind of temperature sensors to tell me what the temperatures are on the outside of the ISS? She goes, well, let me see if I can find that information for you. So I said, okay. Took her less than 60 seconds. She says, well, looking at the data here, um, the temperatures vary. So that was a vague and ambiguous response. And I said, well, what's the, the, the lowest, highest, and median temperature? She goes, well, depending on where the ISS is, is, is located in the sky, the temperatures range between minus 200 degrees Fahrenheit and plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So I want to tell you guys where that may be. All of you right now can do a simple Google search to, and type in the word atmospheric temperature chart. And you'll pull up, click on images, and you'll see a whole bunch of charts there to tell you what the recorded atmospheric temperatures have been. There's a lot of varying pieces of data out there to tell you what the average temperatures are, starting all the way down from the ground to up into the thermosphere. Okay, so I'm show you what the temperature is in the exosphere. But guess what? The temperatures she's discussing are consistent at the beginning of the thermosphere where the temperatures get to about minus 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? I'll say that again. The temperatures at the beginning of the thermosphere and only the thermosphere get to about minus 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Maybe a little bit colder than that. But let's just say average. The coldest temperatures we they probably have experienced based on pressure could be minus 200 degrees. So, plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit is mid to upper thermosphere. Now, how does that relate in with regard to altitude? Well, guess what? The only place to hit plus 200 degrees Fahrenheit in the thermosphere is somewhere around 130, maybe 150 kilometers. Okay, maybe 200 kilometers maximum. Any hotter than that, all right, that fucking thing's falling out of the sky because shit's starting to melt, all right? Shit is going to start to melt, all right? So when, I, when she told me this information, I said, holy shit, this confirms that the ISS is not at 245 miles because above 200 kilometers, the temperatures exceed 500 degrees Fahrenheit. They get to 1,500, 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. There's no fucking way. As a matter of fact, the temperatures exceed 1,500 degrees Fahrenheit at 300 kilometers. 300 kilometers, that's where it's 1,500 degrees. So the ISS is not at 245 fucking miles. Anybody who wants to continue to debate that fucking issue, I'll give you the fucking name of the person I spoke to at NASA. Okay, for the ISS program. And then you pull up an atmospheric chart and you better be able to show me the data 
where the ISS could actually exist higher than that, that what I just said, above 200 kilometers. Those where the temperatures are consistent. So with that knowledge that it can go from 80 kilometers to 200 kilometers based on its elliptical orbit, you got to ask, it, it's got a fuel propulsion system where it can push itself back up into the air. But I'm going to give some, I'm going to give a few people some credit. Flat Earth Hub actually put out a video. I think it was yesterday. I think it was yesterday. And he did some incredible research finding the U.S. Army's fucking balloon program, the air service, U.S. Army's air service, where they had been using balloons for God knows how long, okay? Balloons, fucking balloons. They were learning how to navigate the balloons. They were learning how to put them in different locations and, and move them around the world. So what makes you think that the ISS is not operating the same fucking exact way? Because I'm going to show you the ISS reference manual where the astronauts actually go out on EVAs and they conduct what they call, what they call, the EVAs are used for refueling. Meaning they go outside of this motherfucker to refuel it. Refuel it. You got to ask yourself, refuel it? How the fuck are they refueling it? <clears throat> okay. Well, they've got, you know, liquid and liquid hydrogen and oxygen and whatever other type of materials they're actually using. But they're, I'm saying, I'm going to come out and say, there's no way this fucking thing's flying at 17,500 miles an hour. It's in the thermals, moving at high speed. What speed that is, it definitely ain't 17,500 miles an hour when it's the size of a fucking football field. And it's put together like a really fucked up damn piece of Lego. Meaning that for 15 years, this thing's undergoing this constant stress of rising and losing altitude, gaining altitude, losing altitude, gaining altitude. And yeah, they're very methodical, very meticulous about the way they do this. So I'm not going to discount that, you know, they are, you know, carefully maneuvering the ISS, you know, at specific altitudes to do what they need to do. But some of the photos I've actually seen taken from the ISS where they claim, where they claim they were 190 nautical miles off the coast of Antarctica, 1,100 miles, and it looked like it was taken from an airplane. I'm telling you here right now, based on where the ISS was supposed to be to take that photo, it was out of public view. So no one would have ever fucking seen this thing come down out of the sky to take a photo. And if they did, they reported it as a UFO and it got buried in somebody's fucking investigative reporting somewhere in Latin South America. Because 1,100 miles off the coast of the tip of Antarctica, where they say they took the photo, um, there are not very many people down there. It's not very populated down in the tip of Chile and tip of Argentina. So let's get this party started. What we're going to today's title is Flat Earth Live Aerospace, Aerospace Company Call Beta. I'm going to see if I can do this once a month, every Monday, where we call a few companies to ask them about their aerospace programs. Okay? So, what I'm going to do here is this. <laughs> I'm going to, let me see here, let me take out, let me lower the microphone. I'm going to do a share screen, okay? I'm going to do a share screen. And we're going to, I'm going to pull up Skype. And we're going to make some telephone calls, people. Now, if you're going to put questions in the chat, that's fantastic. But I need to tell you, I need to forewarn you, okay? I'm not going to be looking at the chat constantly because I'm going to be asking some questions. So if I do happen to look at it and you guys have a question, maybe I'll ask that individual. Okay. So what we're going to do today is we're going to call X core science and payloads. Okay. We're going to call someone and let me know, Tony, I know you're in there. Let me know if this is showing on the watch page, please. I don't want to screw this up. Yeah. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, it's showing on the watch page. It's working on. Is it there? Not yet. 
Okay, hang on a second. Let me, can everybody see that? Nope. It still ain't there yet? Hang on. Oh, shit. Here we go. Everybody see that? Can it be seen, Tony? Tony? No. It still can't be seen? No. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. <coughs> no, everybody's saying no. Can't see it. One guy says it may not be refreshing. Uh, Justin says present to everyone. Yeah, that's what I was doing. Oh. All right. Shut it down and start it again then. All right, I'm going to come back in. Just hang on. No, because if I shut it down, I'm out. No, no, no. Don't shut it down. Shut down your presenting to everyone and refresh it. I did, dude. It okay, should be shown. My stupid logo on the screen. What's the problem, Robert? It's not. I can't do the share screen completely. We have to choose the full screen sharing. Yeah, I did. So you should be presenting in full screen. Strange. Yeah, it's not doing it. I don't know what's going on. Here. It might be fucking with me on this Robert, one. Robert, Justin says you can leave and come back. It won't shut it all down. Yeah, it's saying you are currently broadcasting. Existing, exiting the Hangout on air will also stop the broadcast. Uh, it didn't to me. Uh, yesterday my Firefox went uh, down and uh, restarted, and the Hangout didn't stop. All right, let me get, let me go out, and I'm gonna come back. <laughs> 